by Daniel Burnham. Cast, Ingrid Weeks, Madison, 16. Mitzi Rodriguez, Paula, 16. Kevin Perez, David, 16. Mr. Martin, 30s. And Mr. Rodriguez, 50s. Damaris Visvet, Tiffany, 16. Mrs. Culver, 50s. Matt, 15. Eunice, 14. A heckler, do one and do two. David Larson, Austin, 17. John Busey, Mr. Culver, 50s. Gloria Fernandez, Mrs. Rodriguez, 50s. Detrice Hamilton, Sally, 17. Elizabeth Burnham Supple, stage direction. Wears long sleeve dress shirts to school. 
David looks at the tray in front of him, picks up his fork, and stabs at his peas. Matt, 15, a young bro dude, walks up to the table and sits at the far end of it. David notices, picks up his tray, walks across from Matt, and sits down. Hi, I'm David. Matt. Do you want to be my friend? What? I'm new. I was wondering if you would be my friend. Uh, sure. It's a pleasure to meet you. Put the thing away, man. Were you homeschooled? David pulls his hand back. I was. I also have Asperger's. Asperger's? No, Asperger's. It's a social disorder that makes it hard for me to understand social cues. <sighs> Boy, you need a lot of help, but don't worry. I'm gonna help you. Thank you. We return to Madison's table. So, you want to ride to your place after school? I have all the ball practice. Wait for me. Yeah, that's not happening, Dave. I'll meet you at your house. What time should I come over? Six. Don't be late. All right, I won't be late. Could you help me with something before lunch ends? Austin looks down at his barely touched tray. Maddie, I just sat down. Madison stands up. That's fine. I'll see you tonight. Austin leans in for a kiss. Madison rolls her eyes, leans over, and kisses him on the lips. Ew. Interior high school hallway, day. Madison stands on a rickety old ladder. She tries to hang a poster for the volleyball team's next game. David wanders into the hallway. Madison leans over to take the far corner. The ladder shakes. David rushes over. David holds the ladder steady. Thanks. You shouldn't use a ladder uh, without getting someone to spot you. Yeah, well, I tried. People don't like to be inconvenienced. Thank you. Sure. Madison bends over to adjust one of the bottom corners. Her foot gives out and she starts falling to the side. David catches her by the backside and pushes her back onto the ladder. His hands linger on her butt for a second. Hey, that's my girlfriend, asshole. David realizes his hands are still on Madison's butt and he pulls them away. Madison climbs down from the ladder. It wasn't like that. I fell and he caught me. So chill, Austin. If she needs something done, I'll do it. Got it? Okay. I'm sorry. David walks away. You didn't want to help me. He did. Well, I'm here now. You can put the ladder away. Madison walks away before Austin can argue. Austin picks up the ad ladder angrily and walks down the hall. Interior high school hallway, later. A different hallway. Matt and David lean against the wall, watching students walk by. Girls love attention, so if you see a girl you think is pretty or you like something about a girl, you just yell it out like this. Yo, Cindy, nice tits! Fight me! When and where, baby? <laughs> Cindy scoffs, shakes her head, and walks away. That went bad. Nah, nah, if you get a reaction out of them, it means deep down they won. Really? Stop stalling, give it a try. David makes eye contact with Sally. He waves. Hi, you're pretty. <laughs> Thanks, you're pretty too. David grins. She thinks I'm pretty. Dude, being called pretty <laughs> isn't a good thing for a guy. It, it isn't? No, also, Sally's a dyke, so you're never gonna get anywhere with her. A dyke? Yeah. She's not into dick, she likes pussy. Also, you were too soft, you gotta make an impression. Like this. Yo, Madison! Heard my boy got his hands on that sweet ass of yours. Madison looks pissed. Then her eyes rest on David. She scoffs and walks away. You upset her! That's how you know it's working! I gotta go. What? David follows after Madison. He almost catches up to her. Hi. Hey! What do you want? You're upset. Nice job, Sherlock. Thank you. Madison turns around. They are both standing still, facing each other. Are you retarded? I'm sorry. Whether you are or aren't, I shouldn't have said that. I have Asperger's, but I don't understand. Matt said girls like it when you yell at them, but it doesn't seem like they do. No. No, we don't. Matt is an idiot. He knows nothing about girls. He knows more than me. He's helping me. No, he's not. He's toxic. You should stay away from him. 
But he's my only friend. Whatever. Just, just stay away from me, okay? Okay. Madison turns and walks away. End Act 1. Act 2. Interior living room. Evening. Madison sits on the couch alone. Her parents, both in their mid-forties, sit on another couch across from her. Mr. Culver is a distinguished lawyer, sort of, who wears a tie on his days off. Mrs. Culver is the sort of housewife who needs everything to run as planned. She prefers the term organized over controlling. Their living room is spacious and has four couches, including one that curves and can sit at least eight people. Everything is plush and spotless. They are the type of people who are extremely upper middle class, but insist that they're just middle class. Well, this is a great first impression. He's only ten minutes late. How was school today, honey? Oh, it was fine. How was work? Mr. and Mrs. Colbert tense up. Well, um, well, honey, today I quit my job. Madison's jaw drops. Don't worry, honey. Your father will find another job in no time. No, I won't. What is the matter with you? I'm trying to reassure our daughter. I want to take some time. Can we please not talk about this in front of Madison? You're the one who brought up me getting another job when I told you it. There are three hard knocks at the door in rapid succession. That's Austin. I'll get it. Interior, exterior, Madison's doorway, continuous. Madison opens the door. Hey, I'm sorry I'm late. Madison leans forward and kisses Austin on the lips. It's fine. Heads up, things just got a little tense in here. What's going on? I'll tell you later. Just come in. Interior, living room, continuous. Madison leads Austin in. Mom, Dad, this is Austin. Mr. Culver stands up and shakes Austin's hand. Nice to meet you. Honey, why don't you take Austin out back for a bit? Okay, Mom. Madison leads Austin through the house. Interior kitchen continuous. Madison takes Austin's hand and leads him through the kitchen and out the back door. Exterior, Madison's back porch continuous. We see the outside of Madison's house for the first time. A two-story townhouse, white with blue accents, at least 2,000 square feet. The back porch is a massive wooden deck. Wooden stairs lead from the deck to the grassy backyard. Madison and Austin sit on these stairs. Madison looks at the stars that are just starting to appear on the horizon. Austin checks out the stunning backyard. Whoa. Your backyard is amazing. Thanks. So, what's up with your parents? Are they always that intense? Mm, not really. Usually they're boring. My dad quit his job and I'm not taking it too well. Why do you quit? He didn't say. People shouldn't give up as easily as they do. I'm sure he had a good reason. There is no good reason to leave. Austin, everything isn't about your mom. Don't fucking talk about my mom! Austin pulls a pack of cigarettes out. He opens them and starts to pull one out. Please don't smoke. I hate the smell. You'll reek the rest of the night. Then you shouldn't have upset me. You're about to meet my parents! Be cool! Parents never notice. I'm not going to want to kiss you after you smoke. Austin looks conflicted. Sorry, babe. I got it. Austin pulls a cigarette out and puts it between his lips. Austin, please don't. Austin lights the cigarette and takes a drag. Madison scoots away. Austin blows smoke away from her, but the wind blows it in her face. I'm going in. Madison starts to get up. Austin grabs her roughly by the arm and holds her in place. Then he lets go. Stay. Austin takes another long drag and blows the smoke out of his nostrils. Madison is clearly disgusted, but she stays sitting next to him. The girl. Man, this backyard is great. I wish we had a backyard. Interior coffee shop. Same. A large, independent coffee shop. Paula and Sally sit at a booth in the corner. Sally's outfit is bright and colorful, while Paula is wearing all black, as always. They both sip from ceramic mugs of coffee. Sally's is topped with whipped cream and chocolate syrup. Paula's is black. 
So what's the big news? Sally smiled at her nervously for a moment. I decided to come home to my parents. Like eventually? Like tonight. Wow. Um, congratulations, I guess. Well, let's see how it goes first. My mom probably won't let me hang out with you if you do. That's part of why I wanted you. How could you do this to me? I'm not doing anything to you. I know what's right for me, and I think it might be right for you too. Sally puts her hand on Paula's. Paula yanks her hand away. No way! You know how my mom is. There is no way that would end well. I hope maybe we can come out together. Are you insane? No way! Come on, Paula. Come out of the closet with me. I happen to like the closet. It's cozy in here. What happened to waiting until college? I can't believe I'm about to lose my girlfriend. Your girlfriend? Keep your voice down. We can sneak around to see each other, and even then you won't even kiss me because you're you're scared so uh, because you're so scared someone will see and your parents will find out. But it must be nice to have parents who aren't you aren't scared of. Besides, you're a senior. If it goes badly, it's only nine months until you go off to college. I have a whole other year. Coming out isn't as easy for me as it is for you. You think this is easy? I don't know how my parents are going to react, and my girlfriend is vilifying me for coming out. This isn't easy. If you come out, we can't see each other anymore. It's not ideal, but we can still see you around. No! My parents can't find out about me. I can't be seen with someone... someone who's gay. Wow. Well, at least after you, my parents will feel like a walk in the park. That's not fair. You're the one that's not being fair. You're scared of coming out? I'm scared of me coming out because deep down you want to come out too. You can't start living your life until you stop living in, in fear of, what you're, of your parents. You're not just losing me, you're losing yourself. Paula stares at her coffee. Sally stands up and moves to another table and sits in a chair facing away from Paula. They both sip their coffees, together, but completely alone. Cut to close-up, Madison's face. Austin's voice is faded out, but not completely. Madison grunts in response to Austin every time there is a pause. Really? Exterior, Madison's back porch, night. Really what? You think your parents would be cool if they knew we've had sex? What the? Keep your voice down. No, they wouldn't be cool with it. Shit! You weren't even listening to me. You're not listening to me either. Fine. Austin puts the cigarette out. You know, we've never done it here. You think we could be quiet or not? Probably. They don't notice anything. It feels so naughty to take you under your parents' roof. Yes. Such a turn. Austin moves in to kiss Madison. Madison pulls away. I told you I wouldn't kiss you if you smoked. No. You said you wouldn't want to. You know what I mean. Hey, I'm sorry we fought. I've calmed down and I'm just trying to have a good time. Austin goes in for the kiss. Madison tries to get away. Stop being a bitch and start acting like a girlfriend. Austin grabs her by the back of her neck and plants a kiss on her mouth. Madison recoils and shoves Austin right off the stairs onto the lawn. No! Austin pushes himself to his feet gingerly, sore on his ass and the arm he fell on. What? The fuck? I didn't want to kiss you. Why are you always so late? How did I end up with a prude like you? You forced yourself on me, Austin. That's not okay. You're exaggerating. Get out. Baby, be cool. What about- I said get out. Sorry. I didn't realize it was your time of the month. Fuck you, Austin. Bitch, you gotta learn to be cool. Austin heads through the house. Madison sits on the porch alone for a while. She cries a little and heads in. Interior, Madison's kitchen, night. Madison comes in from the back. Mr. Culver is doing dishes while Mrs. Culver stirs a stew. Everything all right? I don't know. Is everything all right between Don't change the subject. Yeah, everything's great. Austin looked very upset on his way out. Good. Madison. Sweetie, you seem really upset. What did he do to you? I don't want to talk about it. I mean, honey, if he did something She to said you, she doesn't want to talk about it. Thank you. 
Mom. Did he force himself on Phil, you? Phil, leave her alone. She doesn't want to talk about but it. But Nancy, something clearly happened. Why are you undermining? I told you having lost him over tonight was a mistake. You just lost your job. We should have canceled tonight. Uh, can you drop that for a few minutes? Yes, you win. We should cancel. Now, can we please focus on that? Leave her alone, Phil. It's just team drama. I'm sure nothing happened. Did nothing happen? I'm suddenly not feeling great. I'm getting out of my room. Dinner's almost ready. I'm not hungry. Bass, please. Mr. Culver starts to follow her. Don't. You've done quite enough. Interior stairway, night. Madison climbs the stairs. Her parents fighting escalates to yelling. Madison groans. Ugh. End act two. Act three. Interior, Paula's kitchen, morning. Mr. Rodriguez and Mrs. Rodriguez are in the kitchen. He sits at the table looking over some papers for work. He used to be the life of the party. But years of working in accounting and being hounded by his wife have made him reserved. Mrs. Rodriguez seasons some eggs in a pan. She's as lively as he is subdued. She will fix the problem even if there was no problem to be fixed. Paula walks in, sits down, and pulls out her phone. Good morning, Paula. Did you sleep well? Average. Why do you such a downer, Mika? You asked her how she slept. She told you how she slept. What's your problem? Where's Felice? Breakfast is almost ready. Felice, get down here! Breakfast is ready! We can hear someone climbing down the stairs. Every day you tell her to be down here at 7.30. She is always down here by 7.30. But at 7.25, you get inquieta and scream at her to come down. Why don't you just tell her to be down here by 7.25? Because then she won't get to yell at me anymore. Everyone turns around and sees Anise, 14, standing in the kitchen doorway. Anise wears a pink halter top and black pants. While Paula is trying to hide from the world, Anise wants to be seen and admired by all. Don't worry, she'll find new reasons to yell at you. Trust me. Who cares? I thought you said breakfast was ready. It will be ready soon. Girl, set the table. Both girls let out a grunt, but start to set the table. Mr. Rodriguez moves his papers off the table, and Mrs. Rodriguez finishes cooking breakfast. Mrs. Rodriguez talks as she puts the food on the table. I heard that you see a gossip at the market in this morning. Oh, do tell. Honey, enough with all the gossip all the time. Agreed. You sure? It's all coming from church. Well then, you better tell us. We don't want to be out of the loop. Mrs. Rodriguez flashes a victorious smile as she scoops eggs out onto all four plates. Apparently, Debbie's girl, Sally, is a homosexual. <coughs> Paul scoffs, tries to cover it up with a cough. Oh, really? Ugh, so obvious. Next up on News with Mom, water might possibly be wet. Hey, you can watch my gossip, it might stop coming. Oh, there's a hope! Mrs. Rodriguez finishes observing everyone. They close their eyes and bow their head in silent prayer, except for Paula. Prayer ends, and they eat throughout the scene. Well, who did you hear this from? I heard it from Anna. But the story is that Sally came out with her family last night, and they aren't even trying to be quiet about it. How did her parents take it? Apparently, they were happy for her. Shameful, if you ask me. I'm sure Pastor Evans will have a serious talk. Paula puts her hand under the table, squeezes them into fists, then opens them. The Bible said, man and woman. <laughs> no daughter of mine is telling me she's a lesbian. Lesbian. Excuse me. They're called lesbians. Fine. No daughter of mine is telling me she's a lesbian. I am raised good Christian girl. You weren't girls weren't planning on telling us anything like that, were you? Not after that. What did you say? Nothing. This one's always mumbling. You got an attitude today, and you were out late last night. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. Who were you with last night? No one. I was at the library doing homework. I told you that. Remember, I only want you to hang out with kids from church, but not Sally. For obvious reasons. And I don't like those God kids that you hang out with at school. They look like Satan worshippers. They're not Satan worshippers. Whatever. I still don't want you talking to them. 
They're not as bad as the snob that Lisa hangs out with. Those are girls from church. Shitty girls from church. Oh, uh, language. Sorry. What about Madison? She's not a kid from church. Can I hang out with her? Mrs. Rodriguez's face lights up. Of course you can hang out with Madison. She's such a sweet girl. So polite. You can learn from her. I think it's admirable. Sally's parents are being so accepting. They do. I think it's nice that they're respecting her decision. Her decision to live in sin? The world is changing, Mom. I try to let you have your opinion, but found that homosexuality is a sin. They are all going to hell. Accepting them means they will never be saved. So you hate them out of love? I don't hate them. They just need to go pray the gay away. Paula looks to be at her breaking point. There is a knock at the front door. I'll get it! Paula pushes herself to her feet and bolts out of the room. Exterior, interior, doorway, continuous. Paula opens the door. Madison is standing on the other side, smiling. Maybe it's just the sunlight, but it looks like Madison is shining like an angel. Paula's face lights up. Hi, Paula. Uh, hi, Madison. What are you doing here? Sorry, I meant I thought Tiffany has been driving you to school these past few weeks. Oh, I canceled on her. I missed our walks. I missed you. I mean, the walks too. But what's the one reason you're here? Madison's smile slumps. I needed someone to talk to. Austin was a jerk and Tip will just say, you need to let it go. Just be cool and smile. I get it. It's Madison. We're going to walk to school together. Bring her in for breakfast. And don't yell if that matter. She already ate. I'm just going to finish her food. I'm full. We have to leave now to get to school on time. You want to be the reason why I'm late? Mrs. Rodriguez rushes to the doorway with Paula's sack lunch and backpack. Hi, Madison. Hi, Mrs. Rodriguez. Get out of here. Get to school. Madison and Paula leave. Interior, Paula's kitchen, continuous. Mrs. Rodriguez comes back in as Amy Sin leaves to finish getting ready. Mr. Rodriguez sits at the table alone. Mrs. Rodriguez joins him. I don't know what's gotten into our Paula. There's something I'm doing wrong. You're too hard on the girl. You need to loosen up. Be more fun. You used to be fun. I was never that fun. You just thought I was because you were Huh. Well, that explains a lot. Exterior suburban sidewalk, continuous. Madison and Paula walk side by side down a street with very nice houses. How are you so nice to my mom all the time? You hate her more than I do. Oh, it's a gift. Or a curse. Also, my time with her is much shorter than yours. Lucky. <laughs> You surprised me. You could have called ahead. There is no way I wasn't getting roped into breakfast with your family if I called ahead. Good point. So what happened with Austin? Exterior suburban sidewalk. Later. He forced you? Yeah. He grabbed the back of my head and pulled me into a kiss. Shit, that's awful. I tried to warn you. He's a total asshole. I know you did. Somehow I didn't see it. Maybe I am overreacting. No, what Austin did to you is unacceptable. It's awful that he treated you like that. You shouldn't be treated like that by anyone. Thanks. So, how are things going between you and your mom? <laughs> well, as long as I stay in the closet, things should be fine. That bad. You have no idea. Today my mom talked about a girl from our church coming out to her parents. My mom thought it was shameful that the family would be accepting of their daughter's choice. Maybe she's exaggerating. I'm pretty sure if I came out to her, she'd burn me at the stake for being a witch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe that's an exaggeration. But she would send me to pray the gay away camp. That's what mom thinks Sally's parents should have done. Sally is gay? I would have never guessed. Yeah, crazy. I guess we never really know what's going on in another person's head. They arrive at school and go their separate ways. Paula turns around and watches Madison as she walks away. Interior school hallway continuous. Madison walks up to her locker, opens it, and grabs some books. She closes her locker. 
The locker next to hers opens. Madison turns and sees it's David. Hi, David. Are you being friendly? I thought we wanted to be left alone. I might have been a little harsh yesterday. It's not your fault, Madison asshole. Thanks. And I think you're right. He doesn't want to help you. Maddie! Good talk. Madison turns around to face Tiffany as she approaches. Hey, Maddie, we missed you this morning. Daddy found a gift card, so I took everyone to Starbucks. Sorry I missed it. Why did you? My mom wanted to drive me so we could have a serious conversation. About what? You're a terrible liar. You were probably sneaking around with that freak, Paula. <laughs> you got me. Bet you went over there real early so you could sneak into her bed. Why would you do that? Because Paula's super gay for you. She's a little dyke. Don't use that word. And Paula's not into me. Trust me. I know. Whatever. Speaking of your sex life, how was last night with Austin? Did you hear Sally's gay? Uh, yeah, that, that's old news. What happened last night? Austin was just being an asshole. He smoked when I asked him not to, and he forced me to kiss him. <laughs> that, that's it? You kicked him out because he smelled a little and he stole a kiss? How do you know I threw him out? He took your seat in the car this morning. He told us all about it while we were in the drive-thru. He doesn't get why he got so upset. He asked me to talk to you. Talk to me about what? Maddie? Just be cool. Austin didn't mean any harm besides that kind of stuff happens all the time. You just take it, especially when it's from a catch like Austin. No, I don't. It's 2019, Tiffany. I, I don't deserve to be treated like that. I will not be cool. You're overreacting again, just like last night. Don't you dare defend him. He grabbed the back of my neck and forced me to kiss him and it felt like assault. So back off. Oh, don't tell me you're one of those hashtag me too girls. It was just a kiss. It happens. I'm trying to help you. Well, you're not helping. You're being a bitch. You're so thick. No wonder Austin's rough with you. Get away from me! Tiffany walks away. Madison leans on the locker and starts to cry. She turns around and sees David standing, still standing there. You're all? Yeah. She doesn't seem like a good friend. No, I guess not. You all right? Madison keeps crying, shakes her head. You want to talk? Madison shakes her head emphatically. You want me to leave? Madison shakes her head. Hey, it's okay. Just sit down. David guides Madison down so she is sitting on the carpet instead of crying into her locker. You're doing great. Take a few deep breaths. Madison takes the deep breaths and seems to be feeling a little better. Would you like a hug? Madison is a wreck. Her face is soaked with tear streaks. She thinks about it and nods. David kneels next to her and hugs her awkwardly. You want to talk about it? Talking only makes things worse, but thank you. Want me to let go? No. Just Stay here with me and stop talking. David stays kneeling in the hallway, holding a girl who barely knows. End Act 3. Act 4. Interior classroom, morning. The class is as full of light and chaos as a jungle. Some kids crumple up notebook paper and try to make shots into a trash can. Other kids sit on their desks. Everyone is talking loudly, except a couple in the back who are making out. Madison walks into the classroom and sees Austin sitting in his usual seat, right next to her usual seat. She looks at the other seats and considers them. She shakes her head, takes a deep breath, and walks to her usual desk, right next to Austin. Austin turns and acknowledges her. Hey, Maddie. You feeling better today? I was. What's that supposed to mean? Hey, did you talk to Tiff this morning? Uh, yeah, I did. We cool? Yeah, sure. You're not acting like a fool. Austin, just drop it. Josh Martin, 35, walks into the classroom wearing a leather jacket. He is the coolest teacher at Colonial. All of the students stop goofing off and sit at attention in their seats. All except at Austin, who was staring at Madison and didn't see Josh Martin come in. 
The room is completely silent. Then Austin opens his mouth. I just don't get what you're so upset about. Maxim gestures with her head toward the front of the classroom. Mr. Martin looks down at Austin. Sorry. No, no. I think interpersonal high school drama is way more important than what we can learn from books. Especially when it involves a young man telling a girl he doesn't know why she's upset in a way that makes it clear he doesn't actually care what she's upset about. It's none of your business. When you stop making outbursts in my class, they'll stop being my business. Now, shall we continue discussing your personal drama, or can I teach my class? Teach. Please. Close up Madison's face. All right. The Scarlet Letter is a classic American novel about a society that didn't treat women fairly. Sadly, we haven't advanced as much as people would like to think. Interior school hallway, morning. Paula is walking down the hall. Sally jogs to catch up to her, and then walks next to her. Hey, how are you doing this? Why are you talking to me? I'm not allowed to talk to you anymore. Your mom found out? Obviously, a woman spends more time gossiping than sleeping. My parents took it well. I heard. Why can't you be happy for me? You came out. It went well. Good for you. We can't all be as lucky as you. I warned you this would happen. I begged you not to come out because you're scared. Paula, I'm sorry, but I couldn't stay in the closet for you. I was ready to come out, so I did. What do you want from me? I want you to be happy for me. Paula sees Madison walking towards her. Shh, stop talking to me. Madison smiles at Paula and waves. Paula smiles and waves back. Paula can't tear her eyes away as Madison walks past. Oh, get it. You're in love with her. What? No, I'm not. No, I get it now. Would you have come out for her? Paula's face turns bright red. I'm not allowed to talk to you. Leave me alone or you'd get me in trouble. Paula speeds up and walks away. Sally is left alone. Sally notices Mr. Martin staring at a trophy case. She walks over and stands next to him. Staring at the trophy case again, Josh? Sally, hey, I didn't see there. Yeah. Just remember the good old days. Oh no! I suppose the good days? For some of us, mostly the athletes. Mr. Martin and Sally stare at the picture of him between the two trophies he won. I was so handsome back then. You look better now. Sally, that's inappropriate. Don't worry. I don't play video teams. I think once my parents last night. How did it go? Great. Congratulations. Thanks. The bell rings. You should get to class. So should you. Mr. Martin pulls his eyes away from the trophy case. Yeah, I guess you're right. Interior kitchen, night. Madison's mother does the dishes while her father takes out the trash. Madison pulls out her phone and texts. Can you come over? We need to talk. Exterior, Madison's back porch, night. Madison and Austin face each other standing on the porch where the night before went so wrong in silence. Austin clears his throat. Baby, what's wrong? You know exactly what's wrong. I can't believe you're still upset about that. You need to learn to let things go. No, Austin. I'm not letting this one go. You have me come out here this late at night to lecture me? I just wanted to talk this out. Fine. Talk. You were very rough and controlling last night. What? I was just being myself. You disrespected me. I disrespected you? You're the one who's always up my ass, telling me not to smoke a cig, shushing me at restaurants, summoning me across town this late at night, and you think I'm controlling? You grabbed my arm forcefully. You were trying to walk away from me. I don't take that shit. Seriously? Yes, seriously. A man has to keep his woman in line. I am not your woman. I'm not your anything. I, I'm done, Austin. I am breaking up with you. You what? I'm done with your bullshit. Just, just get out. You called me all the way over here just to dump me? I didn't know that would happen, but yes, that's what is happening. Oh, wait, let's talk this out. There's nothing to talk about, Austin. I'm done. 
Austin grabs Madison and shakes her. You won't leave me! You can't leave me! The way your family treats women is why your mom left you. Austin shoves Madison and she falls to the ground. They are both in shock of what just happened. I'm sorry. You will never touch me again. Get the fuck out of here before I call the cops on your ass. Austin rushes to the door and leaves. Interior, Madison's room, night. Madison rushes into her room holding a lighter. She sees a picture of Austin in a frame on her desk. She takes the picture out of the frame. She stares at it a moment, then flicks the lighter and holds the picture up to the flame. Madison watches victoriously as the picture of Austin's face burns. Then she realizes she holds a burning picture in her hand and is about to burn herself. Oh, shit. Madison rushes out of her door. Interior bathroom, night. Madison throws the mostly burnt picture into the bathtub and runs the water. The ashes of the picture flow down the drain. Madison smiles. That felt good. Interior, Madison's room, night. Madison sits at her desk. She opens a drawer and pulls out a pen and notepad. She starts scribbling intensely. Hello, students of Colonial High. I have a few words I would like to share with you. End Act 4. Act 5. Interior Cafeteria, Noon. Madison pays the lunch lady for her food and walks into the cafeteria proper. She sees her usual table and is tempted to join them for half a second. She sees Austin. She can't sit with them today. She sees Paula sitting alone, takes a step towards her. Madison shakes her head and walks to an empty table. She looks down at her food, lifts her fork, then drops it. She goes into her backpack and pulls out the pages she wrote the night before. She puts her hands under the table. They shake. Madison looks around and sees two security guards. She picks up her fork and takes a bite of her lunch. Madison sees David sitting a few tables away. He waves her over to join him. She smiles, waves at him, and shakes her head. Madison notices the security guards walk out of the cafeteria to patrol the halls. Madison takes a few deep breaths. Then she stands up. She steps onto the bench. Some students take notice. She steps onto the table. More students take notice. And so does Mr. Martin, who is the teacher on duty, leaning against the corner wall. Madison fumbles with her papers. The cafeteria falls still and quiet. All eyes are on Madison. Hello, Colonial High. I have something to say. She finally gets her papers in order and starts to read. Hello, students of Colonial High. Yeah, you said that already. I have a few words I would like to share with you. High school is hard. I'm not talking about classes. But the social expectations, the shitty ways we treat each other, how we are going through so many major changes and experiences, but we're supposed to act like everything is okay. We're supposed to just... Be cool. Madison makes eye contact with Austin, then breaks it off. I found out my boyfriend, sorry, my ex, is an asshole. I won't say his name, but most of you know who I'm talking about. A lot of students turn and look at Austin. He fidgets uncomfortably. But you know what's worse than the actions of an asshole? A society of people who don't want to hear about it. Girls who encourage other girls to get walked all over, to be grateful for it even. Madison stops reading and lowers the papers to her side. You know what? I've had a rough few days. My life isn't perfect. But standing up here, I realize we all have issues. Maybe it's your parents getting divorced. Maybe it's realizing you're gay and being afraid to tell the people who matter. There are so many things we are going through, but we keep getting told to be cool and get over things. It's bull. We shouldn't bury our feelings. We should build each other up instead of tearing each other down. Stop hiding and allow yourself to be who you are. 
Paula is overwhelmed and sneaks out of the cafeteria. We need to appreciate each other, not tear each other down or keep each other quiet. I haven't always appreciated people enough. A friend of mine has always been there for me, but I haven't always been there for her. And that needs to change. Madison looks around and is disappointed to not see Paula. I also met someone recently who made me feel like I matter more than people I've known for years. Find someone who makes you feel that way. Life is worth living, so live it to the fullest and don't let your significant other, your parents, or anything keep you from living your best life. No matter how alone you may feel, there is always someone there for you. After today, things are going to be different. After today, I'm not going to be who people expect me to be. I'm going to be who I choose to be. And you should too. There's an awkward silence. David stands up and starts clapping. Slowly but surely, other students follow his lead until at least half the cafeteria is applauding. Madison shakily climbs down off the table and sits at her bench. Mr. Martin looks around and can't help but give a golf clap. Madison sits in her same spot on the same bench, eating her lunch, as if nothing had happened. Austin makes his way towards Madison, clearly menacing. A few guys block his way and keep him from getting to Madison. Guys, what's the problem? Just trying to talk to my girlfriend. X. Whatever. I just want to talk to her. Not today or not. Get out of my way! Austin clenches his fist and pulls his arm back. Austin, stop. Austin turns and faces Mr. Martin, startled and scared. Then a smile spreads over his face. Austin walks away from the boys blocking his way and towards Mr. Martin. They both speak quietly. You were here the whole time, weren't you? Shouldn't you have stopped her? I think she said some things that you all needed to hear. I don't think Principal Washington will see it that way. Are you threatening me? You should do your job. I don't have to listen to what you think I should do. That wipes the smile off Austin's face. This ain't over. Stay away from her, Austin. Austin clenches his fist and walks toward the hallway. Tiffany follows Austin. That went better than expected. Madison turns around and sees David standing a few feet away. Yes, it did. How long have you been standing there? Long enough for it to be weird. <laughs> well then, you better come sit down. David sits down next to Madison. You can defend me if anyone else comes over to harass me. You do just fine without me. Maybe, but you seem like a sweet guy. I want to keep you around, even if I don't need you. Was I the person in your speech? The one you just met? Well, yeah. I want to... What? It's nothing. No, you were going to say something. Come on. Well, since I can't learn about girls from Matt, maybe I could learn from you. Sure, I guess. You have a specific question? What do I do if I like a girl? Well, you tell her you like her and you ask her out. I like you. Would you like to go out sometime? Yeah, just like that. Oh. You're actually asking me. Forget it. Oh, I'm sorry, you just caught me off guard. That's fine. I just want to get to know you. I'm sorry, I'm just not looking to date anyone right now. Through a doorway, Max sees Paul walk down a hallway. Sorry, I gotta go. Oh, okay. Madison grabs her stuff, stands up, and walks toward the hallway. She stops and turns back around. You know what? Yes. Yes? Yes, I'll go out with you sometime. I'd like to get to know you too. Really? Yeah. Come up with when and where and let me know tomorrow at my locker. Madison turns back around. Wait, can I get your number? Madison faces him. No, I just met you. But you'll go out with me. David. Yes? Just go with it. All right. 
Madison walks away and David watches. When Madison is out of sight, David pumps his fist. David notices Madison forgot her speech papers on the table. He gathers them up and puts them in his backpack. Interior school hallway afternoon. Madison speed walks to catch up to Paula. Hey, Paula, wait up. Paula slows down but keeps walking. Where are you going? Exterior bleachers, late afternoon. Madison and Paula sit on the bleachers, watching the track and field team practice. I should have figured. You've always loved the bleachers. Life's simpler when you're just a spectator. But that's not really living. Thanks. I didn't see you there after my speech. I know. I'm sorry. I couldn't take it. I was trying to make things better. I know. But I can't afford to hope, Madison. You give up too fast. No, I don't. I don't care if you don't come out. Just stop letting your parents' hatred define you. So is that what you do now? Fix people? I've accepted myself. I just want to help other people do the same. You're so cute when you think you're right. Thanks. So, what did you think of my speech? It, what you heard of it, anyway. It, yeah, it was crazy. In a good way. You seem happier since you gave it. I oh, am. Yeah. Then yes, in a good way. This new kid, David, sat next to me after I gave the speech. I don't think I've met him. He's cute. Paul wrestles. Isn't it a little early to be thinking about guys, you and Austin? Why are you sounding like your mother? <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> so anyway, this David guy. I need to tell you something. Okay. David asked me out and I said yes. I am in love with you. Madison and Paula look at each other in shock. End of episode.